The Samyang 12mm f2 manual focus lens. How good is it for landscape photography for a relatively inexpensive lens? Let's get out in the field and find out. Ah, g'day ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me for another vlog talking all about the Samyang 12mm f2 manual focus lens for Fujifilm. But a little bit of a twist today, I don't normally use this lens for landscape photography. It's normally my go-to for the night sky astrophotography work. But I was using this lens down below before, just muck around this composition, because I actually left it in my bag. And you know, I thought to myself, you know what? I hardly ever use this lens for landscape photography. So I'm gonna go up here and make a vlog today all about this lens because I hardly ever use it and I wanna see how good it is to recommend it to you guys. But before we get into that, if you're new to this channel, I'm Matthew Storer, a travel and landscape photographer from Australia, traveling to least explored countries, showcasing the beauty and diversity from around the world through my photography on this channel. So if that interests you, just head down here and push that little button to subscribe for future content. We've got a short little walk up here today though, a place that I've only been to once, but it was on my photography workshop with a guy named Daniel. Daniel, if you're watching this, g'day mate, thank you for joining me, it was an absolute blast. And you'll know exactly where we're about to go today. But it's a wide angle vista shot because we had some fresh snow yesterday, a great chance to use the Samyang 12 mil. So let's get going. Alrighty, finally made it. It might be a short little hike, but she's a steep one. Get the blood pumping, the sweat coming out. I'm trying to really combine the vlogs lately with a little bit of fitness session to remember why I love to get out and do these type of things. But I want to touch on this little lens before we get into the composition and this beautiful image right here in front of me. The spec sheets might not read out very good when it comes to this lens. There's no real wow factor. But to me, there is 300 euros basically brand new. Sometimes I've seen them at 180 euros secondhand. That is crazy for this little lens. 12 mil, F2, yes it may be manual focus, but for landscape photographers like we are, does that really matter? That's what we're about to find out today. But this is my go-to for star photography, Northern Lights, absolute winner when it comes to that category. If you wanna see more of those vlogs, please make sure to subscribe because I've got a feature coming up about night sky photography, which you'll absolutely love, which will heavily, heavily feature this lens. But it's plastic body. Does that really matter? No, when it's 300 euros or secondhand. It has got a metal lens adapter, which is really, really cool. Gives that a little bit more reinforcement. 67 mil front element, pretty cool. There's no wow factor, as I said, but the price point for F2 is absolutely fantastic. I've drawn a little marking on here for my nighttime photography, which makes it really easy when filming at night sky. I normally shoot F2, F2.8 with this lens, and that's why I want to get out today to see how good this is at F8, because this does suffer a little bit from vignetting, especially at F2 for nighttime photography. This is not nighttime photography, this is landscape photography. So let's get the composition set up and see how good this bad boy actually is. Okay, so after quite a bit of mucking around, we finally got a composition set up. And it's a little bit more difficult when you shoot with a prime lens, especially 12 mil wide open, because when we want to zoom in, we zoom in. When we want to zoom out, we zoom out. So we move with a tripod or with our legs. Now, that's why I always say, when I find a prime shooter out there that has an immaculate portfolio, I just want to hug them and congratulate them on their extremely hard work. Something I wish I was a lot better at with shooting with primes, because it is quite difficult to get that composition down packed. That's what takes me on to why I come out tonight to shoot with the 12 mil. I was driving along before, and I've shot this image that I've shot before in the autumn time. I got the 12 mil out just because literally I left it in my backpack by accident. I got the image out and composed it, and there was so much dead space, as you can see right now. It's down the bottom and also in the sky. Dead space, to basically explain what it is, it's real estate inside the image that we could be used and fill it. So the viewer's eye, we looking at the image don't get drawn away from the main subject as sort of 
a boring composition, let's say. Then I went back to the car and got the 16 to 55 and shot it at 35 mil. Now, yes, I could do this with a 35 mil prime, I just don't own one. But with that little bit of mid telephoto, we got that compression from the foreground into the background, but most importantly, we got rid of that dead space. That's what we're trying to do when we shoot with a prime, work with composition with our legs of the tripod to get rid of that dead space. And that's the issue we're having right now. I've moved around quite a bit to try and eliminate this dead space right here, to try and get the bottom of the framing in this, I'm gonna call it a village, there's only about six houses here, but this village, and then also to compose it with the obviously massive, massive background right now. So I'm gonna get this composition down pat and I'm gonna come back to you guys. Look at that view. Isn't that just gorgeous? I think this mountain range here is one of the most beautiful viewpoints for me personally towards the Julian Alps. I hope in 35, 40 years, I'll be down there in the village of Goods Matuliak, sit on the balcony drinking coffee every morning, retired, looking at this mountain range. I probably won't because house prices are so bloody expensive, but let a boy dream, please. Getting back onto these cheap lenses, not expensive house pricing. Now, because it's not a native lens to Fujifilm, it doesn't read out aperture, okay? So it reads out uh, one over 10 F0, obviously it's not true, plus one exposure compensation ISO 160. But for a cheap lens, it has got the markings on top from F2 all the way to F22. Now, I normally shoot this at F2.8 or F2 for the nighttime photography, but how good is this at F8? So right now, F8 setup, it still obviously reads out at F0. The next thing we're gonna struggle with is that manual focus. Now for me personally, I go through and do probably 95% of my images in manual focus for landscape photography. So it doesn't really matter. And especially when we shoot wide open, especially at 12 mil, if nothing's in the near foreground, it's much easier to focus. So my framing sort of comes down to this first cottage, which is 100, 150 meters away, so quite a long way away. I know since I've previously marked infinity on top of my lens, that I can go through and check so I'll punch in on the back of my camera, go down to the nearest point, so this village just here, and the exposure, uh, sorry, the focusing is lighting up red for focus peaking, so that's in focus. Now I wanna go to the furthest point, the mountains in the background, that is also lighting up red, so we can tell right now everything from the foreground to the background is in focus at F8. So therefore, for landscape photography so far, it's quite a good lens, especially if nothing's in the near foreground, it becomes really easy to focus all the way to infinity to get everything in focus. Also that 12 mil is a really good focal range to tell the whole story in landscape photography. Also it's very lightweight and also very small, so it's super simple to put in your backpack and go hiking all day long or traveling with it. And lastly, it's not a massive burden on your pocket as far as financial statement. At 300 euros, it's quite easy to replace it if it does break, as long as you're using it in all types of elements. So a landscape photography lens and obviously a low light lens at f2. So far, it's pretty bloody good. But I know a lot of you guys worry about sharpness out of the image. So that's what we wanna check right now. At f2, we get vignetting. At f8, I can already tell we get rid of most of that vignetting out of the lens. Remember, it's only 300 euros. So right now, I'm gonna push a two second timer, get that shutter going, and here is the image and make your own mind up how sharp it is. Rightio guys, there you have that image from tonight and you can make your own mind up on how sharp that image is. I know YouTube compression is behind it. That's why I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can download this image from tonight at 100%, blow it up and make your own mind up on how sharp it is, just in case you are interested in purchasing this lens. But can I please just say this? I read so many comments on you know, lens reviews saying this lens is crap, this lens is sharper. I think most of those people just don't know how to use their lenses properly because sharpness is not everything. It comes down to so much more than just sharpening out of a lens. You can sharpen in post-production, so it doesn't really matter. This lens at 300 euros does my Astro work, it does my Milky Way work, Northern Lights, and now a little bit of landscape photography. So four things out of a 300 euro lens, that's pretty bloody good. Yes, a 10 to 24 is my go-to lens, just because on tonight's image, I probably would have zoomed up to about 14 mil. 
just get rid of that dead space in the foreground. And I like that versatility out of the zoom lens. There's an amazing thing called the crop tool in post-production. So I can just crop and get rid of that dead space also. I would lose a little bit of resolution out of it, but does it really matter? Probably not. It's half the weight, half the price, half the size. It's a very good thing. But let me know in the comments below, guys. Do you use this lens, this beautiful lens of the Samyang, and what do you use it for? Landscape, weddings, nighttime photography, whatever. I don't care, I'm really interested to know. Also, down on my Facebook page, you'll see the image from tonight. And in the comments below, show me your best images from the Samyang F2. I really wanna see where it's from, what settings you used, and why you love this lens, because I would recommend this lens to a lot of bloody people out there. And also buy secondhand because there's so many people out there that don't use them, that just get rid of them. Absolute winner if you ask me. But right now it's getting very cold. I'm gonna pack up, get back down to the car before it gets too dark and I'll roll down this hill. But guys, I'll be seeing you on the next one. Ciao.